I'm in my new teaching space, teaching slash production space. I'm giving you the three-dimensional tour. I'll get dizzy if I keep doing that. But this is where, from now on, Phil Circle Music, that's what I, by default, once you know, started calling my teaching studio. And uh, Guild by Association Records will be stationed here in Chicago, in Rogers Park, uh, where I've been for the last couple of years. Uh, so now I gotta figure out what to do with it. I don't know, what do you think? What do I do? I was up till two in the morning uh, looking for desks. Do I go for the, do I go for the corner desk? you know, by the window? Do I go for, you know, a big desk like space over here by the front? I think the teaching will probably happen by the windows because that's from the door. Are you dizzy yet? I'm getting dizzy, man. There's the front door right there. See? So I want to put the te where people do their singing and guitar playing back here by those two, the two, the first things to come in, two bar stools. All right. So anyway, here I am. I'm, I'm excited, delighted, a little bit scared, as you should be with any kind of new business venture. And I'm also going to be doing a lot more to coach uh, aspiring musicians, uh, aspiring music entrepreneurs, as they call them, musicpreneurs, if you want to be P. Diddy about it, um, in the how to, well, how to do this. Uh, if you want to have a great influence on the world and you want to have the means by which to, to do your craft, money is probably a good thing. You don't have to focus on that. And just because there are a lot of greedy fatheads in the world doesn't mean you have to be one too. So I'm of the firm belief that if it weren't for money, I wouldn't still be doing music. Uh, and I haven't made a lot of it, but I've made enough that I can now look at another release this year. Um, and that's partly in thanks to patrons, people who go, yeah, you need money to do this. So let's make sure you have the means by which to do it. I tend to teach my students how to do that anyway. So I'm going to start kind of offering a coaching program over like a long-term thing with that. So watch out for that. I haven't come up with a name. Got any ideas? All right. Have a great day. Peace. What's happening? So I'm in a new space and I, as you can see, I'm getting it ready. I've got some acoustic tiles up there. I had to do some research because I don't know shit about any of these things. I do know how sound works, kind of, more or less. But I went and I looked up stuff and they told me how high to put them and how far apart to put them. I, I'm, I'm tired, but I'm excited. I, I went and I used my, my technical drawing skills, which I, I, that's one of my few A's in high school. And I went and I saw there's going to be a table of plants right here because the sun, it's a southern exposure, see? It's a, ah, it's like there's going to be like a couch. It's on its way, as, uh, and that's going to be across behind me there, facing away, where there'll be chairs facing it. We can sit and have a conference and talk and stuff. And then facing this way, right about here, is going to be uh, a desk, like an L-shaped desk from which I will do my work and stuff. And then all the equipment and gear and things that I need as needed, guitars and such, will be over here. This wall will be covered with a lot of the pictures I already have in my old home studio wall, which will become uh, my wife Megan's office. Hey, what's happening? One day closer to opening my new space. I'm sitting in it. I got more done today. Well, I'm sitting on the couch. I see. I like the color. What do you think? It reclines, too. Mm -hmm. I like to take naps. I'm middle-aged. Kind of rare that middle-aged independent musicians would continue to... Uh, expand and try to do new things, but I guess I'm, I don't know, crazy that way. I think all the sound baffling is all done. They said on the directions you can do like funny, like uh, fun, like designs. So I said, all right. Um, but I also used the instructions as to where to put them. I see one place now that I'm looking at where I could probably stand to put a few more, but that wall is kind of hard to put stuff in. What I did is I uh, used spray adhesive to put them on little pieces of cardboard and then nail them to the wall. Because I don't want to use spray adhesive on the wall, especially a new paint job. It would just peel right off. I used to think of myself as technologically challenged. And in college, which is a long time ago, uh, in the 90s, uh, a teacher said um, in, in this class where I was learning how to use a computer, uh, you know, you can make like 40 bucks an hour working on Macs. 
teaching people how to use computers. There are a lot of people getting computers now and they don't know how to use them. And I was like, I'm one of them. And then at the end of the semester, I knew how to use them and I knew how to do you know, Photoshop and all the great stuff they taught us to do. And I immediately jumped in and I went, I could use 40 bucks an hour. I didn't even think about it. And I went and I was training people how to use their Macs. And uh, then they'd go, uh, hey, uh, do you know how to upgrade? And I said, um, uh, yeah. Totally, and I didn't, but I knew I could look it up, and I did, and I figured that out, and I uh, was able to make a little extra money upgrading them, and uh, then I started uh, going to the wholesalers who supplied them, uh, and including drop shipping the G3 processors, which were brand new at the time, out to all my clients, and then people said, can you fix it? And I said, sure, and I had no idea how, but I knew people that could, and so I gradually learned it and became Phil the Mac guy. It was Mac Attack was the name of the business, but people come and go, are you Phil the Mac guy? And I was like, yeah, I'm Phil the Mac guy. What's happening? And it was fun and it was exciting to do. And, you know, at, at, at the time pushing 30, uh, it didn't occur to me I couldn't do stuff. Now, uh, in my early 50s, sometimes it does occur to me I can't do stuff. And I've decided, well, that's bullshit because I have all the qualifications to do all kinds of business related things. I have uh, all kinds of entrepreneurial you know, work in my background. So I decided, uh, why don't I, uh, uh, take myself up on some new expansion ideas. So here we are. That's what this place is going to do. Anyway, continuing the, the movement forward one day closer to opening the dojo, man, that's what somebody called it. I think it was a student. Uh, I'm going to go with that, but with a grin on my face, cause I don't take myself that seriously. Um, I enjoy what I do and that's a beautiful thing. You all should be doing the same thing. Peace. I love you. Oh, hey, it's live. Okay, I'm trying to use the auto-rotate so that my camera is the right way. So when I put it on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Circle. Anyway, here we are. So I need quickly your advice. See this fine desk here? Okay. So, see? I can, you can see through. I like that because I like to be able to see through here. Okay. But I do also... Like it's set up where I can, on the back side, cover these on the back side. I'll show you what I mean. Um, and what I'm trying to figure out is do I want it like that? On the, so that this shows to the back side, to the other side where the couch is? Or do I want it like this? Because really, who cares what you see on the inside of the shelf? And on the back side, it'll look like fake wood. Because we all know it's fake wood. It's not like I'm fooling anybody. I didn't go buy an old desk. But here's what it looks like. See? So even if that's on there and I do that, it's still like, well, I can see all that raw wood right there. What am I going to do? Maybe just don't give a shit. I don't know. Got any ideas? I'm, I'm looking for your ideas. Help me out here. Yeah. Uh, so I got all the CD things, the stuff that goes, yeah, it feels legit. That's the unsung. It's all Chicago songwriters, except, except the one by Neil Young and uh, one by uh, uh, Patrick Bayham. All right. So do I put those over here where people would be sitting on the couch? And there's going to be chairs over here to talk. I got a new table today, see. Um, and then posters, framed posters and stuff there. And then put the people that I know and love and whatever on the other walls here and by the desk. Or do I do it the other way around? So that's the input that I'm looking for for today. Anyway, that's it. One day closer. I got to go teach until 9 o'clock tonight. So I'm still doing that back over at the home studio until the new year. So... I'll talk to you soon. Peace. What's happening? Uh, one more day closer, and look, there's look, there's shelves. Oh my God! I have enough books to fill that. Uh, half of them are obsolete music books because, well, a lot of them are obsolete the minute they come out because they're full of a lot of crap you don't need. So maybe erroneous information is the word I'm looking for. For instance, you don't need a book of twenty thousand chords because. In about three pages, we can write every movable chord form down, and you can just learn the roots on the fifth and sixth string. There's your free lesson of the day. That's all you're getting. But take a look. There. Look, it's already attracting the chicks. That's my wife. She's more than a chick. She's one hell of a broad. So, <laughs> um, and I'm so dead. And that this, uh, the couch is there. Okay, so I want to thank Darren Jellison, my songwriting buddy from Philadelphia, for his suggestion to leave this desk shelving wide open, not to put the backing on it, uh, to, to have line of sight. Uh, it was confirmed by my wife that that's a good idea. Hey. She knows shit. What'd you say? 
Oh, I said it's a great idea. Thank you. I mean, D Darren says thank you. In that corner right there will be the last table that I have to assemble tomorrow. On it, I will put plants, and uh, in the drawers I will put tools, and under it will be that little air conditioning you saw. Ready for, well now, because it's so freaking hot in here all the time, I keep a window cracked. That's, that's the power of heat. Our apartment's like that too, radiated heat. So anyway, I guess that's about it. I'll have an open house in January for a local folk or anybody who's in town visiting to come by and have a look. But you have to be invited. Um, so there it is. If you're looking for music lessons, the dojo will open soon. All right, look at the space, man. It's almost there. So right behind me on this wall, I'm gonna switch hands. Uh, I realized as I was putting this stuff together that there's a hundred years of music in my family. Well, there's centuries of music in everybody's family. But I was putting this picture up here. That's my grandfather, Herbert Philip Wagner. And that's Nils Tavares. No, that's Nils Tavares. I met him when I was about 15. My grandpa didn't play ukulele, by the way. He was the tenor in that band. They recorded. They were recording artists. That's around 1922. Uh, they were finishing up at University of Michigan. Um, that's where my mom went, my uncle went to, and my grandma, his wife. Um, she drove a Model T Ford across the uh, campus for homecoming. He never let her drive ever again. And below that is my mom, Lilius Circle, Lilius Wagner Circle. Uh, she uh, produced opera, first woman ever to produce all 14 Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. Pretty cool. And then below her in the later hosen, yes. How about those legs, baby? That's me. I think I was about 14 and desperately hoping that none of my friends showed up at, the, at that uh, a particular opera. There's 1922. I mean, they were going at the beginning of college, so 1918, man. What year is it? 2018. There's 100 years of music in my family. Uh, recording artists. I mean, they were on the radio. My mom recorded on their albums when she was four. She was playing on their albums playing piano because, you know, my grandpa was a show-off, apparently. And there's my degree from Columbia College and because I like puns. So, uh, recircle my recent release. But then, to make it more interesting, I put this up. This particular show uh, went well enough that it today went out for digital distribution. Not the Dave Arcari part, but Dave was there whooping and hollering, baby. Yeah. Dave, it's all your fault. And uh, special guest, Phil Circle, that was me. So my opening set is now an album from that particular show. And Timbredio, as you can see, I was part of that launch concert. Down there. And uh, she'll be ready to roll. Well, that's it for now. I gotta go teach somebody. That's what I do. All right. What's happening? So... I don't know if you can see behind me. Yeah, you can a little bit. There's a fence in the way. So I was pulling into the parking lot by my building, and I was listening to an audio book, and it was talking about mindset strategies, you know. And it's stuff I've heard before, stuff I tell people, stuff I believe. And one of them is something almost, almost an exact quote to something I might say. When you move forward, there will be friction. You'll miss the bus, you'll get a flat tire, there'll be a hurricane. And I pulled into the lot and there were burnt out cars in the lot and I went, huh, what's going on? And I got out of the car and the manager of the building said, oh, Phil? I said, hi, never met before face to face. We had a fire. That's right, a building caught on fire. Now, the next thing that came out of her mouth was, it's okay. Your space is still there. To which I was immediately grateful, but because I am also a worry ward, I wondered, was there smoke damage or something? And I uh, talked to one of the insurance adjusters and said, well, I got this, this music teaching studio up top that I'm, I'm looking to, you know, open. And I guess I should reschedule the, the internet install. And he said, yeah, I kind of need power for that. We don't have any. Uh, but yeah, you're up there. Yeah, you're fine. So well, that's good, because these cars behind me sure aren't. <laughs> There's a lot of them. But I can see here up 
to my space. And this is the other side of the building. And we're all intact. So, what's the lesson? Take nothing for granted. I'm grateful that that car behind me, my little black Honda, doesn't look like the car of this poor soul that was in the body shop. There was no people injured. I'm grateful for that. I don't have to know somebody to be grateful that they're not injured or killed or something. And I'm grateful that that badass mural is still intact. So, on this fine day, 35 degrees, got the car washed, about to head up to see family. Have a happy holiday, whatever it is you celebrate. Have a wonderful new year, be safe. And uh, I'll see you in the new year. My space will still open. Stay afloat. I'm open! All right, so after, uh, I met the owner of the building today, by the way, and I thanked him profusely for getting this place underway after the fire. I did learn that a firefighter was injured, um, and I understand that seriously. I'm inquiring further. Uh, I'm incredibly appreciative. Uh, you know, you think about it, these folks go and they fight fires and, and save people potentially save people's livelihoods in the case in my case certainly uh and probably save lives and that sort of thing and they don't know who they're helping they just do it um that's huge man uh so you know really puts things in perspective when you think about that got everything wired for sound wired for teaching i've already had some students in here and i'm going to have an open house sort of uh, Kind of like an art gallery opening, but with without the visual art. Um, and uh, I will play a short set at some point, probably about 7 p.m. I've got some new material. I've been writing with my baritone guitar, my Ibanez by Air Baritone Guitar. Uh, the internet's plugged in. I'm about to do an online lesson with a guy in yeah. Virginia. Isn't that the best? Alexa, play Phil Circle. Shuffling songs by Phil Circle on Amazon Music. In the city. I wrote this in 1995 while at Columbia College for a class uh, for songwriters, engineering for songwriters. So. Trying to be pretty Hallelujah Hallelujah Your faith was strong But you needed proof you Saw her bathing on the roof Her beauty and the moonlight 
overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the 